Hi, I'm Arunoda and welcome to the my screencast a series about different JavaScript and React related tech topics. Today we are starting with uh, Next.js incremental static regeneration. So it's a lot of words, but basically what's happening here is uh, Next.js is trying to bring the best uh, features from the server side render rendering and the stat static side generation and bring them together and create something awesome and that's exactly what this means so let's let's go through and see what is this so uh, first of all we need to discuss a little bit about server-side rendering and what it does so let me show an example so here this is a simple news portal pretty simple one so you have set up blog post or news articles and you can click them and see details so i can click the first one so as you can see we have the timestamp where where this page is generated uh, time the, this shows the time this page generated and it's generated a few seconds ago and if i go back and click the same page again you can see every time i click this page it will regenerate uh, in the server and that's what server side rendering means uh, and and so you get the then then you get the the html version so it's uh, it's really easy for the search engine and other places to see but right now search engines and different crawlers and i can actually read javascript and they prefer to do that sometimes so the advantage of uh server side rendering is is really uh, questionable but the cool feature of server side rendering comes to the build time so if you have a lot of pages in your website and then now so you don't need to generate everything uh, locally so so you can generate on demand in the server and that's a really cool feature so that will you, you can by doing that you can you can iterate on your website really quickly right so that's that's about uh, server -side rendering and, and the disadvantage of server -side rendering is you have to spend a lot of server resources on the server at the same time uh, so if your data fetching uh, logic is logic is taking a lot of time and that's going to impact your page load times as well so that's really uh, important and if you think about static site generation so basically here we generate everything locally or in the build server so now with that uh, you can have set up html files and some javascript and other assets as it once you have those things you can put them into a static web hosting provider like uh, bazel or some other place by doing that so you, you users get the actual html and there is no server generating gen generation process and it's really fast and uh, yep yeah, and that, that's the cool feature of static size generation but the problem is you have to generate everything locally let's say you have like a the news portal like really big one like bbc or cnn so then you're adding new articles every day maybe every minute oh not exactly minute but every hour or so so then uh, you have to regenerate your app every time and that's 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 really a huge uh, huge problem then let's say at the same time your developers is actually changing your application and okay that's a different uh, problem again so you have you have to build your app a lot of time and at the same time uh, you have to spend a lot of time building the app so that's that's terrible um and that's where this the cool new next js features comes in uh, for static uh, sites so there are two main features i would like to focus on one thing one called static incremental static generation so usually known as a fallback mode so what's happening here is uh, you have a, like a page like this news slash slug and then you can ask next year to like build the two two pages locally like covid19 and uh, global warming so this might be the pages that a lot of users using in your uh, website right now on the on the news portal but at the same time let's say you have now new pages or, or maybe you have some very old articles and then you can build them on demand in the cell so by doing that you can create uh, very critical or most popular ones in the in the build time and at the same time you you can on demand generate uh, pages in the server and this is really interesting so this fix one problem because your build time is now slow 
But what happens if you want to fix a typo or maybe you need to your your page contain dynamic content. So then uh, then I, uh, in in that case I need to like build my app yeah every time. And that's where incre- uh, this regeneration support uh, comes in. So we call it incremental static regeneration. So what's happening is really simple. Uh, I can show you uh, by doing that rather than talking. Right, so let's say we have an example app here. So I click this Sri Lanka page and you can see it, it, it was generated a few seconds ago. Right now this is a fresh article and everything is new. But after 20 seconds this page is gonna invalidate. So it's not new anymore. So then I, I can ask for a new page. But you can see I click the reload now button but it didn't show me anything new. So then let's re- click again. Oh, now I see the, the new new content because I, I can see it was generated a few seconds ago. So what's really happening here? So I can show you. The, the, the first time, so you ask, so I mean like in the first time it's a completely new page. Then after that 20 second window, so you ask for a new page, but then you get the old version. But what happened in, inside the app is really interesting. The next phase triggers a regeneration process and then it will create a page, the new version for you and then and store that. And then the next time I, I reload the page or some other user, then I get the newer version. So let's say this is uh, the first, after first 20 seconds, and until the uh, 40 seconds come, so every time someone asks, if they get this, this near the, the created, already created uh, cache. So by doing that, so we're not creating the pages every time as users using, but we have the control on when to uh, create these pages. In this case, it's just 20, 20 seconds, but it could be as low as one second, or maybe it could be as long as you want. For example, for an old article, you can set it for once a month maybe. For a new fresh article, you need to fix some typos. You can make them make them like every every few seconds. And then yeah, so it's up to you to decide how you can control the the timer. Yeah, and then yeah, with these two features, actually, so we are making static applications, but they look like they work like server side rendered apps. That's what I called you. Like this is bringing the the cool features from uh, server-side rendering and uh, static side generation into a single place. Yeah, and this is it. Uh, I didn't uh, show you the code and how everything works. And there are a lot of my information in this, this article. And go to my blog post, arunode.me, and you can see this article. I also put the link in the description. And yeah, that's it. And see you next week with uh, something different.